Down to Earth. Good album. Good album. I like um, I like his singing, Grand Bonnet. Of course, I love the instrumentals, man. You know, all great musicians. Uh, Richie Blackmore is just uh, one of the best guitarists ever. And uh, you, that's a winning combination right there. You know, of course, it's got a different signature sound from uh, the Ronnie James Dio uh, time period. And uh, the songs on this album are very, very good. Now, of course, none of them are as epic as uh, Stargazer, you know, but for what it is, it's a damn good album, you know, and if I was to rank it or something like that, I'd give it a three and a half out of five, you know, so really good. Not the absolute best and stellar, but really, really good. Definitely a good listen. And um, I would say uh, off the top, the uh, two songs that I really liked the most was uh, Danger Zone and the song right before that, uh, Love's No Friend. I love the guitar riffs in it and uh, I like the songwriting in it. The only thing I would say that hurts this album in my eyes is that um, the topic of heartbreak and lost of love um, was probably the biggest strike against it. Where you're talking about previous Ronnie James Dio and Black Sabbath um, uh, stuff to sing about, they uh, sang a lot about um, the dire consequences of the environment, of the social justice, of the religiousness of life in general. And so there's more um, being sang about. There was a call to action. There were warnings. There were signs of the times. There's a lot of those things. What hurts this album in my eyes the most is the repetitive uh, topic of uh, lost love. You know what I mean? Because everybody has covered a song about lost love. Yeah, there's, you know, the odd ballads or whatnot, but uh, the disillusionment of love and all of that sort of thing, it's just, uh, it's a very, very easy topic of conversation to sing, and, or to write and sing about. I'm no damn critic, and of course I got no talent like that, but it's just what I'm seeing. What do you think about that? Let me know what you think, but don't uh, don't kick my ass. It's just my point of view. So, um, let's do this, man. Let's uh, say that this is the end of side two, and let's go into the review afterwards. I'm going to uh, go take a quick break, and then I'll be right back. Give me a sec. Okay, everybody, here we are, man. We are back again. Let's, uh, let's head into a review, man. Check this out. Uh, down to Earth and uh, see what we can learn about um, Rainbow, this album, and Grand Bonnet. So, Down to Earth. Down to Earth is the fourth studio album by British hard rock band Rainbow. It's their last album to feature drummer Cozy Powell and their only album with vocalist Grand Bonnet. Released in 79, it contains Rainbow's first hit single, since you've been gone, marking a more commercial direction of the band's sound. Okay. And it's their only album with Graham Bonnet. What happened? How come he was only around for one album? It doesn't say. Writing and recording. The writing of Down to Earth began at Richie Blackmore's house in Connecticut in December of 78. By that time, he had dismissed both bassist Bob Daisley and keyboard player David Stone soon after singer Ronnie James Dio quit the band. And why was that? Blackmore had already recruited his old Deep Purple bandmate Roger Glover as producer and started auditioning musicians for the vacant slots in the band. While songwriting progressed with Blackmore, Cozy's Powell, and session musician Clive Chamin on bass. The backing tracks were largely written by Blackmore and Glover. It was a great opportunity for me, and why should I bear a grudge uh, about being dismissed from Deep Purple? Recalled Glover. Okay. I'm a huge Richie fan. Some of my biggest influences have come from him. All right. Yeah, um, I've heard it said in uh, by I don't know who or where, 
uh, that he's a hard guy to work with. Um, maybe it's because he's a perfectionist, maybe because he's moody, maybe because uh, people can't live up to his very high standard. What is it about our Blackmore? Let me know. If you know um, uh, about Richie Blackmore uh, very well, clue me in. Because Wikipedia isn't going to give me, you know, much information. By the end of 78, Blackmore had recruited keyboardist Don Airy, a suggestion from Powell, and considered Ian Gillen and Peter Golby of Trapeze to replace Theo. In April of 79, Jack Green of The Pretty Things was hired as a new bass player for the recording sessions at Chateau Pelle de Cornfield, Cornfield, in the countryside of southern France. But he did not stay for long. And why is that? Producer Glover ended up playing bass on the album and produced lyrics for all songs. And luckily, he was uh, a good bass player. While auditions for the new singer proceeded, Glover tracked down the ex-marble singer Graham Bonnet, who auditioned in France and was immediately hired. All right. During song composition, Bonnet made his vocal melodies that his con uh, contributions remained uncredited. Okay. His vocals were not recorded with the other tracks in France, but later at Kingdom Sound Studios in Long Island, when all other recording sessions were completed. Down to Earth is the only Rainbow album to feature Bonnet, though he was still part of the band when writing for Difficult to Cure began. Hmm. Yeah, what happened there, man? Let me know. Also recorded for the proposed next single, but unreleased due to Bonnet's departure, was Will You Love Me Tomorrow? Bonnet had previously recorded this song for his first uh, eponymous, eponymously titled solo album in 1977. Rainbow's version was recorded in the studio in May of 1980 during rehearsals for the Japanese leg of the Down to Earth tour. It was subsequently played live throughout that tour. Okay. So, touring. In 1980, Blackmore's Rainbow headlined the inaugural Monsters of Rock Festival at Castle Dunnington in England. Songs from Down to Earth had been performed by Graham Bonnet at his solo shows, as well as concerts performed with Don Airy in 2001 and Joe Lynn Turner in 2007. Uh, excuse me, I'm a... Uh, holy cow, there is a lot of information here. Okay, let's, uh, let's skip over the release information and just go straight to reception. All music editor Stephen Thomas Erlmine defines the album, quote, a fine hard rock platter, which might not offer anything unique, but it, de but it delivers the goods. He criticizes mostly Bonnet's vocals, but praises the guitar artistry and uh, mystical sensibility of Richie Blackmore, who sounds invigorated on the album, unquote. Okay. Yeah, I, uh, I like his vocals myself. Pop Matters' Adrian the Grand, reviewing the 2011 Deluxe Edition, remarks how Down to Earth is somewhat underrated compared to the towering Dio discography, but it remains a strong outline 31 years later, even with the new material sounding so much more stripped down compared to the overtly epic heavy metal arrangements of Dio era Rainbow. The songs are eight searing, hooky hard rockers, remarkably rendered by Bonnet's performance and energy. The album is perhaps the most divisive record in Rainbow's catalog, according to record collector reviewer. That's what it's called, according to record collector reviewer, because of Blackmore's single-minded pursuit of mainstream success and the departure from the sound of preceding albums. He adds that this is a strong album with many classic radio staples, but the second disc of the deluxe edition does not add anything uh, essential to the listening experience. In 2005, Down to Earth was ranked number 431 in Rock Hard Magazine's book of the 500 greatest rock and metal albums of all time. Blackmore's Opinion in an interview with Sounds in 79, Blackmore said, quote, I have so much respect for classical musicians that when I listen to myself, I think, oh, that's nonsense. 
I can put down other people's music because the fact is, I put down my own music and say it's rubbish. A lot of it is, not all of it though. No time to lose definitely is, but eyes of the world is okay. But a good deal of it is a waste of time. <laughs> Unquote. That's what he says about his own uh, music and his own songwriting. Good balance, you know, keeping yourself balanced, why not? You can pat yourself on the back, but also I, you can keep yourself contained. Blackmore's opinion, interesting. All right, y'all. That concludes our look at Down to Earth. What do you think of Down to Earth? I give it a three and a half uh, out of five. And uh, you already know why I uh, have uh, given it that score. It's not a low score. Uh, it's not a really high score. In my mind, four and higher is uh, high, you know. Um, but yeah, it's a good album. It's a good, it's a solid good album. And uh, I've got two favorite tracks on it. And um, I like uh, the vocals of, um, why do I keep forgetting this damn dude's name? Graham Bonnet. I, I, I like the vocals of Graham Bonnet. And uh, I think that it's well matched with the musicianship of the band. Of course, you know, you can't compare, you know, one singer to another. It's not fair in that regard, you know, because nobody's going to really, um, nobody is Ronnie James Dio, let me put it like that. But yeah, man, in his own right, he's a good singer. And uh, I think that he fuses very, very well with Rainbow. And like I said, the only thing that um, makes it, um, that hurts them, I think, is it's in the songwriting itself, in the subject matter of uh, the topic matter of what they're singing about. I think that's the only thing that really hurts uh, hurts their uh, efforts here, in my opinion. But I'm no damn critic. I'm just plain Wayne. <laughs> All right, man. So that concludes my look at this great album. Let me just check my notes here. Mm, yeah, uh, yeah. I gotta do uh, reactions, uh, Akachita, Sasha, Don, Vernon, uh, and I got a couple of new patrons I gotta take care of. That is what I've got coming up in the shoot. Led Zeppelin Factor. Um, I'm not gonna bother with Led Zeppelin until the weekend. So we're probably looking at, a, what have I got? Yeah, I think it's the fourth album, album reaction that I've gotta do, full album reaction. And I know that I've got a, a uh, couple of uh, uh, bootlegs and a couple of interviews and stuff like that. I got to touch base with a few people. They've got some stuff for me where it comes to uh, interviews and uh, documentary. Oh, speaking of documentaries, yeah, I've got um, Whiskey O' Go Go. I got a Ginger Baker documentary. I got a couple of documentaries that I uh, want to get to. You know, this year going forward, want to get back into the Southern Rock stuff. I know akachita has got some of that for me. And uh, I want to get into the uh, progressive uh, again. I believe Finesse got something for me. And um, so, you know, a couple of things like that. And I definitely want to get into some stuff that's outside the norm of just most reactions being documentaries, interviews and stuff like that. So uh, that's that's what I'm looking at doing going forward into this year, man. We're already almost at the halfway mark. Well, not really, but it's uh, time has flown, man. We're already into May. The latter portion of May already. It's like it's like I've been standing still half half the year, man. All right, that's uh, that is it. No more notes. All right, guys. Thanks for joining me. Have a good one. Take care, and I'll probably see you tomorrow. Uh, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow doing uh, Akachita's reaction. Have a good one. Peace out. <laughs>